Appreciate the time, guys. So just to, to start out with, I better just uh, mention quickly, I stutter really badly. So the presentation is not going to go well, I can guarantee you. Uh, it's not going to go smoothly. I, I may not be stuttering now, but I will be stuttering in a few minutes. Um, but I'll try my best, so I hope you don't mind. Um, so today I'm going to be speaking about camera trapping best practice. Um, as the majority of us all probably know, camera trapping has now become pretty ubiquitous throughout, um, f uh, throughout ecological research ever since the 1920s, 1930s. Um, um, due to their popularity, camera traps have undergone a technological revolution. As camera trapping devices have become more and um, more advanced and more competitively priced, they too have become more accessible to non-specialists. Although camera traps are pretty straightforward to use, practitioners quite often uh, use them totally incorrectly. Excuse the stuttering, as I said. Um, moving on, uh, since 2013, Panthera started intensive camera trapping across the country. Um, camera trapping and 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 the application of camera trapping to carnivore populations has made great strides in increasing our actual knowledge base with regard to large carnivores. Um, however, the implementation of carnivore camera trapping studies are often um, are often Okay, stuttering has begun. Are often undertaken without sufficient consideration to survey design and how we should put up our actual camera traps. Um, for example, in a literature review in 2013, um, it was, was actually discovered that 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 ninety percent of 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 jaguar related camera trapping um, um, studies did not meet minimum requirements um, specifically with regard to to um, uh, camera trapping design um, more specifically on how they were actually uh, sticking out all their cameras. Um, how we conduct camera trapping, including how we actually um, stick up all the cameras, uh, significantly influences our results. For example, in Norway, Hamletel demonstrated that increasing the, the, the actual time interval on time-triggered camera traps um, resulted in a, a, a detection error rate ranging between 23 to, 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 to 58% therefore, uh, thereby um, thereby influencing uh, the, the results at the end of the day with regard to their precision as well as with regard to the actual accuracy. Um, given the decline in, in mammalian carnivore populations globally, understanding how such factors influence camera trapping outputs 
remains a pressing issue. Here, we conducted a simulation study to evaluate camera trapping sampling layouts to, to identify which approaches produce the most accurate and precise, uh, precise results within a spatial capture-recapture framework. Using leopards as a model species, we collated raw camera trapping data sets from a range of camera trapping uh, studies, which Michelle actually spoke about earlier on, um, and used the results uh, to parameterize a realistic range of simulated uh, camera trapping survey scenarios. So moving along, uh, to start, we um, uh, to to start, we were keen to investigate the accuracy and the precision of two camera trap arrays. Uh, to start, it was a block design, and then also an actual cluster design. Um, more onto that, we then also were keen to to investigate the influence of the scale parameter, also known as sigma, um, as well as 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 um, as lambda 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 zero, which is considered the encounter probability, and how how minimum, mean, and 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 maximum thresholds change. Uh, the results at the end of the day. Um, we also then chose to to, uh, to 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 evaluate all of this um, using three different um, uh, three different leopard population estimates, uh, which you can see on the slide there. I hope everyone can read that at the back. Um, moving on from there. We were also keen to, to, to investigate how many stations we actually need within a block and within a cluster design. So as you can see, yeah, we used anything up to, well, from uh, 16 stations uh, to as many as uh, just over... Um, just over 200 and... 50 stations as well for the block layout and with regard to the cluster layout we tried four stations per cluster nine and 16 so excuse the way that it's yeah it's not presented correctly on the screen for some reason it hasn't come across nicely we also wanted to look at how we should space our actual stations across the actual landscape. To do that, we, we, um, we evaluated one, two, and five kilometer spacings between camera stations. Um, and lastly, we wanted to look at how long we should be leaving out our actual camera traps. Uh, should it be um, 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 one month, two months, or as much as five months? Lastly, to take it all into account, including spacing and the number of actual stations that we have out in the field, um, how does the amount of area um, uh, uh, change our actual um, uh, results at the end of the day. Uh, to achieve all of this, we ran six 
specific spatial capture, recapture models within a maximum likelihood f uh, framework um, using using parallel processing and a state space of 20 kilometers. Our actual simulated scenarios used the exact same scenarios as well. Um, we removed out um, removed out any of the results that were just uh, completely crazy and we ran this 100 times. Um, from our actual camera trapping analyses, we were able to extract out the important information, um, which we then applied to the actual camera trapping models. Really quickly, the plots that you see are pretty confusing, so I'm just going to explain them quickly. Um, along the horizontal panels, you've got known leopard numbers uh, across all, across. 100 square kilometers um, across the vertical panels you've got a specific camera configuration for instance this example here specifies a nine square kilometer uh, camera trapping area uh, using a four by four uh, configuration really quickly just to explain what the plots actually mean. We want median lines to be as close oops, to be as close to the red line as we can get and we want the spread of the actual plot t to be as small as it can be. So in other words the, the plot on the right hand side is a lot better than the plot on the left hand side. Um, really quickly the 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 important thing to actually speak about here, just to keep in mind, this is the block layout that has been used for just one 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 month. Um, we kind of have a sweet spot in the centre. For instance, if you were to keep your cameras out, uh, sorry, uh, if your camera traps uh, cover, you know, like an area which is too small. Um, you're not going to get too good results and if it covers an area too large again your results are not going to be too good. If we extend that to two months again we get a pretty similar result. Oh, my screen's gone blank. Uh, Sorry, I don't know what it's doing. In any case, uh, Panthera is essentially... I haven't got a pointer. Um, Panthera is essentially camera trapping... Sorry. Okay, in any case... Um, we shouldn't move on, so I haven't got much time. And the computer's going nuts. So, really quickly, the blue highlighted area there, the plot on the left-hand side is what Pandera does, but we actually use a huge, huge, huge amount of, of stations in the field. Instead, we can use actually a quarter of those and still achieve results that are pretty much comparable. Um, if we then extend the actual, the actual period to the absolute maximum, again, the results change a little bit, but not a huge amount, and, and still have that sweet spot right in the middle. If we move to the cluster designs, excuse the actual formatting, it didn't quite work, just to explain it, the vertical panels um, and specify the actual survey area and how many clusters were used. In the scenario here we've used a 2 by 2 cluster and as you can see it's not great, there's a lot of spread in the plots. Um, 
which means we can't be too certain um, you know, of all the results. If we extend it out to two months, again, the spread is really high. Even if we extend up to the maximum, the spread is really high. If we increase the number of stations per cluster, the, the precision increases quite a bit. Even when we ex extend out how long we leave our actual camera traps up out for, even to the absolute maximum, but still it's not that great. Um, I almost forgot to mention clusters are, s are proposed to work really well when you're trying to cover large areas. However, in the results that we produce here, as you can see on the right hand side, across the three scenarios, um, the performance is not great. Um, and again, if we put more uh, uh, stations within the cluster, um, the results improve uh, to an extent, but not incredibly, even if we were to leave the cameras out for quite a bit longer. Uh, in conclusion, we suggest that, um, that individuals using the block layout avoid small and large uh, survey areas, short and long survey durations, and should select larger, um, larger distances between stations, intermediate camera configurations, intermediate survey durations. For the cluster layout, avoid smaller clusters, avoid larger survey areas, and long survey durations, select large clusters, small to intermediate survey areas, and short to intermediate survey durations. Um, at the end of the day, what we were able to conclude was that intermediate block layouts were likely to be the best, which is contrary to what is in the actual literature at the moment. Any questions? This time.